So today is September 26th. And our topic is percentages. How do you change a percent to a decimal? What is a percentage? Like you have percentages in school all the time. Someone says, oh, I got 70% on my test. Well, what does that mean? 7 out of 10 or 70 out of 100. Because a percentage is a number over 100. So if you got 32% on your test, it's like you got 32 out of 100. But it was like, oh, but Mr. J.R., I did, the test wasn't out of 100. It was out of 25. Well, 32 out of 100, I could divide them both by 2. That's the same as getting 16 out of a test out of 50. That would still be 32%. Divide by 2 again, if the test was out of 25, you might have got only 8 out of 25. Yes? I, we're just starting student council, and what grade is this? Grade 9. And since a percentage is over 100, so if 32% is 32 out of 100, you can always write a percentage as a decimal. 32% is 0.32. Okay? Here's a percentage I'll tell you. Tell me, where do you use this percentage almost every day? 13%. Taxes, right? You pay taxes. You go to Dollarama, you buy something for a dollar, it doesn't cost a dollar. Times it by 0.13 because 13% is 0.13 as a decimal. And then you find out you have 13 cents of taxes. And then they say you have to pay your dollar plus 13 cents. So you have to pay a dollar thirteen, and how much does it cost you in the end? A dollar fifteen, because there's no pennies anymore. So they charge you an extra two cents. <laughs> Sometimes they take it away. They depend on how they have to round it, right? Convert the following: nine percent would be 9 out of 100. Okay, I don't want to see this on tomorrow's test. No 9%. You guys study tonight to do better than 9%. Right? And as a decimal, okay, careful, this is hundreds, so the whatever number you have here, you have to fill in two spaces to get to your hundreds. So it is a common mistake that people write 0.9, but this one should be 0.09. Because it has to get to your hundredths spot. <laughs> Twenty-three percent. If we wanted to write that as a fraction, 23 out of 100 as a decimal, 0 0.23. Um, when we say decimals, I don't know uh, who invented this in the English language, but when you say a decimal, you always say just each number individually. So you never say decimal 23, you always say decimal 23. This one, 58%. 58 out of 100 as a decimal. 0 0.58. All right, ready to work your brain just a little bit more? Okay. 113%. Close. It's still going to be over 100. Okay. 
113. Now, if you're dealing in hundreds, whatever your last number is, that always has to go in your hundredth spot. So my hundredth spot will be a 3. That would mean as a decimal, this one will be 1.13. You know how we were talking about taxes before? Okay. If something costs $20, if you multiply by 13%, that's like saying 20 times 0 0.13, which is, I'll do the mental math, I'll teach you how to do that quick yourself, but for right now, $2.60, okay? That's how much taxes you would have to pay. How much would you have to pay in total? If you wanted to buy something that was $20, by multiplying by 0.13, we find out our taxes are $2.60. What do you have to pay in total? You add those together, right? $22.60. Now watch what happens. If you buy something that's $20 and you multiply by 1.13, and this is something you can use your phone calculator for every time you buy something. If you multiply by 1.13, it gets you the total right away. The 1 says you have to pay the $20 plus an extra 13%. So we would say that your final cost is 113% of your original cost. That can be really helpful. You find something, it's $56. You go to your calculator and you say, okay, so 56 times 1.13, it's going to cost me $63.28 in the end. Yes. Are we going to have a quiz? Well, this topic isn't on this quiz, so this will be on next week's quiz. Well, we did all the stuff today, right? We studied adding fractions, subtracting fractions, mixed numbers, improper fractions, changing to a decimal, changing to a fraction, multiplying, dividing. All of that stuff is on tomorrow's quiz. What is... 25% of 200, okay? You are going to buy, what are, you, what, what are we buying for $200? Okay, a new gaming console, and it's $200. That seems about right, and it's, it tells us that it's 25% off. So the question is, what is 25% of 200? What do we do? We do 25, I'm going to just write it out, 25% of 200 translated to math. This is a decimal, 0 0.25 times by 200. We type that into our calculator. If you have your calculator, try it. It's equal to 50. So whenever you see 25% off, you can figure out what 25% of that number is. Mathematically, that means 0.25 times 200. You would get $50 off. So now the console would only cost you 150 instead of 200, right? And this is important because you, when you go to buy something, right, you have an idea, what's a good deal, what's a crappy deal, right? And so be like, oh, $200 shoes, good deal? No, right? That seems like really expensive shoes. But they say, oh, 25% off. So now they're $150, and you'd still be like, that's still not a good deal. 
So we have to know how the percentages work because you're going to be buying something and you're like, ooh, it's a percentage off, but it's still not necessarily going to be a good deal. You know what? Some stores even do this, right? You know what their regular price is? Their regular price is $150. But this week, they raise it to $200 and take 25% off. Still same price, but now you think you're getting a better deal. Have you ever seen stores do something like that? Where they have a percentage off, but you're like looking at it and go, hey, wait a minute. The regular price is still way more than it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, stores are trying to trick you. They, they want you to feel good and they want to take as much money from you as possible. 10% of 88. Okay, so if we were doing this on our calculator, we would say 10% of 88, I can change this to a decimal, 10 out of 100 would be 0 0.10. Okay, I don't need to write the zero, but I want you to think of this as your 100th spot. So if you have 10%, that zero, the last digit, has to go into your 100% spot, which is really just 0.1. And then you would multiply by 88. Do you guys know the trick for doing 10% without a calculator? Yes? No? No? 10% is really easy. All you have to do is move the decimal place over 1. So this becomes 8.8. .8. If you had 10% of 1,000, if I move the decimal place over 1, I get 100. 10% of 33.7 would be 3.37. Ten percent, we just move the decimal place once. Which is really nice because lots of places have like ten percent of something. Or if you want to do just quick mental math, how much taxes am I going to have to pay on fifty-six dollars? Well, taxes are thirteen percent. That's more than ten percent. Ten percent would be five dollars and sixty cents off 56, move the decimal place one over. So you know that your taxes are going to be just a little bit more than $5.60 when you go to buy them. Ooh, uh, oh, I, so much fun doing mental math, sorry. So I told you at the beginning of the year, sometimes I get excited about things. Now we want, what is 30% off of an item that is regular priced at $40. So we want to figure out what 30% of 40 is. That's 0.3 times 40. Okay, go to your calculator, type this in. Okay, and that is $12. How much bigger is 30% compared to 10%? Uh, like, you, if you have 30% and 10%, 30% is how many times bigger? Three times bigger. Remember the trick for 10%. What's 10% of 40? Move the decimal place over. It's four. 30% is three times bigger. What's three times four? 12. That's fun mental math for me. Right? Because this 0.3 times 40 seems like it'd be a little bit harder. But if I can do 10%, which is 4, then 30% is just 3 times bigger. What's another word for 50%? Like if you had 50% of 40, well, half, right? 50% is half. All right, so that is where we are going to stop for today.
Oh, I do want to show you one more. 1% one of 387. If 10% moves the decimal once, 1% moves the decimal twice. Okay, so 1%, which is 0 0.01 times 387, becomes 3.87. Okay. Ten percent of fifty six would be five point six. One percent of fifty six, fifty six cents. Mental math, tell me right now. Oh, this is fun. No. Now you're buying something for $56. Without your calculator, you can figure out what the taxes are. 13% would be 10% plus 1% plus 1% plus 1%. Is that good? So it's going to be 10% 560 plus 1% plus 1%, plus 1%. This is going to be $1.50, $1.68 plus this. Without a calculator, you can do 13%. And it's not, I mean, it's not bad. Sometimes it's a lot of numbers that you're having to remember and add, but you can do an estimate. You can say, okay, so this is about a dollar fifty plus five sixty. I get an idea of how much I'm going to pay. Okay, I will get you your practice sheet for this.